around good morning. It's like 4 a.m. and I'm up. In my coffee already. Hopefully you can hear me. I don't want to be loud. I'm loud most of the time. But this morning I'm kind of like, what is it? Just waking up shit and uh, kind of quiet. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Isn't that crazy? You know, I read this on the top of this. I'm going to continue on today with glorification, which is the best part. But I read this on top. It says, afflictions have their place in our spiritual development. Is that not true? Without afflictions, would we not develop? Probably not. Probably be like the rest of the world, suffering in uh, misery and in their pain and suffering and craziness. But, you know, when we see that affliction does produce and they do have their place in our spiritual development. So that's important. Okay, let's go on here. You know, I'm getting new subscribers every day. Every day and I do want to mention this at the top of the show. You know, I don't usually respond on YouTube videos. I get a lot of comments on my videos, but I don't respond. I, they're all positive, pretty much. I get very little negative responses on my shows, but, you know, I want to thank my brethren for posting your comments on my shows. There's one guy, one brother, he says it every day. He goes, good morning, Rob. <laughs> I love him. Because every day, he, he posts it. Good morning, Rob. <laughs> Robertson or something his last name is? Sorry. I don't remember your name, but right off the top of my head. But I know you do it every day. I appreciate it so much. Because, like, wow. This guy watches my show. He's dedicated. And he, he says, good morning, Rob, to tell me that he's watching my show. He's watching it. And he's getting something from it. I love that. And I thank all my brethren for commenting. It, it's good to get them. Th the, the feedback is great. I appreciate the feedback, huge. I had a wonderful fellowship too with Seth uh, Fallencamp last night. Video fellowship, which was cool. Got to hang out together and fellowship together and share shit together and share our own experiences in, in this life, in this mortal life and get to know each other really well, like, you know, in that sense, right? Get to know where we are spiritually. It's fucking cool. I think it's great. And he's a cool kid. You got to get to know this kid because he's a good kid, no matter what. I call you a kid, Seth, because I'm like 54. That's the only reason I call you a kid. In fact, I call a lot of teenagers and young people kids because, yeah, it's amazing. I sure appreciate it, the fellowship, though. We all need it. We're brothers, Seth. We're brothers. But I'll still call you a kid. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, glorification. Finally, we read... Whom he justifies, these he also glorifies. What, an estate, what a statement there. I gotta repeat that. Whom he justifies, these he also glorifies. The glorification is future, but it is just as certain as the foreknowledge and pre-designation, not predestination, pre-designation, the calling and the justifying. There can be no question of any of us not attaining to the glory that is prepared for us. If any of us were to fall by the wayside and not attain to that ultimate glory, then to that extent, God's foreknowledge would be proved to be at fault. No, we shall all attain to the glory because all the stages of our spiritual experiences are entirely of God. And at all stages, he is for us and is working all together for good for us. And what is the glory that is before us? In Philippians 3.20, Paul de describes it as a glory of being like our Lord and Savior. I was speaking of a casting of an eye because it's so awesome. The casting of an eye is like a mirror image. So when we actually look at him, we will be instantly like him. 
at the snatching away, it's just so cool because we will see him as he is and we will be like him. That's it. In an environment which is far higher than the earth. For he says that our realm is inherent in the heavens. That is, it belongs to the heavens and has always belonged to the heavens. We are only here on loan, as it were. Compare Cephas, being inherently a Jew, Galatians 2.14, and the cripple being inherently lame from his mother's womb, Acts chapter 3, verse 2. Neither of these had ever been otherwise than as described. And the same applies to the realm of the, of the ecclesia. As a complement of Christ, we have to be like him. And we are to share his glory, for we are to appear together with him. We have this in Colossians 3.14. If then you were roused together with Christ, be seeking that which is above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Be disposed to that which is above, not to that on the earth. For you died, and your life is hid together with Christ in God. Whenever Christ our life should be manifested, then you also shall be manifested together with him in glory. In this glory, we are to be presented to our God and Father in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints. 1 Thessalonians 3.13 Then shall we know, as we have never fully known before, that God has been for us all the time. The momentary lightness of our affliction is producing for us a transcendently transcendent Ionian burden of glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 Notice the contrasting terms here and how the scales are heavily tipped on the side of the glory. In the one scale, momentary lightness, affliction. In, other, in the other, Ionian burden of glory. With the words, transcendently transcendent, added for good measure. We tend to think of our present affliction being heavy, but it is the glory to come that is heavy whatever we have to endure now however tiresome it, it by is by comparison momentary and light in verse 18 of the eighth chapter of romans which we have been studying paul tells us that he is reckoning the sufferings of the current era do not deserve the glory that is about to be revealed for us Cer they certainly do not not by a long long way the greatness of that glory which will be ours lies in the fact that god will make full use of of us for his glory he is to be found he is to find glory in the ecclesia and in christ jesus for all the generations of the eon of the eons amen and what talks about that glory in the ecclesia and in christ jesus for all the generations of the eon of the eons think about that that is the eon the impending eon the thousand years the eon of the eons actually no sorry about that i believe that's the last eon right there the eon of the eons yeah okay glory in the ecclesia and in christ jesus for all the generations of the eon of the eons amen Ephesians 3.21 Note that the Ecclesia is placed first in the passage, not to suggest that the Ecclesia is superior to, the, to its head, but simply to emphasize the fact that God is to find glory in the Ecclesia as well as in Christ. Oh, what a wonderful thought that is. God's purpose requiring the Ecclesia for its completion, and God requiring the Ecclesia to complete his glory. And in his glory, we, sh we shall find our glory. He will be for us, and we shall be ever, ever be for him. This is John Essex that wrote this article. I think I might have read this before. I don't know. You know, so many passages correlate in different articles, and they're the same, because it is to God's glory completely and fully. So if I do repeat stuff, it's good stuff to repeat. So I could repeat it day after day after day after day. And it would, be, it would be the same, and it far excels, no matter what. I could say it and repeat it. You could get it the first time, but then you could get it the second time even more so. So that's a good thing. It's a matter of teaching and in that way, where when you say something, 
Maybe they won't get it the first time. Or then when you say it the second time, they'll get it that time. Who knows, right? Okay, so I'm going to finish this article completely and fully here by address to the Almighty, eternal ruler of the infinite. How can we sinners truly worship thee? Thou who hast made all things in earth and sea, and strewn the stars with stu with stu which stud the vault of night, art spirit pure and far beyond our sight, so pure that from thy presence sin must flee, and yet without thee nothing else can be. For thou, immortal God, art life and light, great sovereign of the universal scheme. The praises of thy subjects thou wilt hear, ascending to thy throne in heaven above. Dread deity, omniscient, omniscient supreme, how can we worship thee untouched by fear? Through Christ a father answers, I am love. That's awesome, too. All right. You have a wonderful, what is it? Thursday. Yeah. I lose track of days. That's okay. I love you all. Have a wonderful Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow.